Hey guys, Fuzzy Knob here. Welcome to part six of this video tutorial series. Uh, in this part, we're just going to pick up where we left off. So uh, if this screen of gobbledygook makes no sense at all, you probably missed the uh, previous videos and you should go back and watch those. Uh, so anyways, in this video, we're just going to continue on. Um, right now, uh, we know where EIP is overwritten. And in case you're a little hazy on that, the reason uh, we know that is because we see that 4646 4646 is what uh, was tried, the, the memory address of the instruction that was attempted to be, have been uh, executed, and um, of course that's not a valid memory address for this process, and we it caused a segmentation fault. Um, so now we can just uh, kind of compact this back down. So 8 D's into 16, we got 24, and take these 4 E's into 24, we get 28. So it takes 28 bytes of data, and then EIP is overwritten, and then we have some extra data, and uh, this didn't affect the fact that it crashed the program. So at this point, uh, with these four Fs, uh, we can put some memory address in and uh, get the program to run the code at that memory address. Now, what we need is some code to run. Now, the easiest way to do this is to just put it in with this uh, argument string. And uh, for this example, it's going to work just fine. Um, so what we might want to know is how much space really do we have? And, uh, you know, so how much space do we have for our, for our exploit code? So just to, just to check, we're going to put some Cs here. And we're going to try, I don't know, 500 to see if we have uh, how much space we have, if we have 500 C's there, or maybe we only have, I don't know, 20 bytes to use, and this would not work then. So we're going to crash the program. It got a segmentation fault. Now, if we look at the stack, let's say 500, let's say 200, hex words, add ESP. What this is doing is it's taking a look at Actually, we'll say, let's look at 500 bytes. What it's doing is it's taking, it's, it's looking in memory. We're going to look at 500 hexadecimal, that's the X, B for bytes. And we're going to start looking at uh, where ESP points to. Okay, so what you see is the output of memory. Over here on the left are the memory addresses. Here are the values stored at those memory addresses. So. What you see is right now ESP points to 43 in the hex, which is equivalent to C, of course, in ASCII. So here's all our 43s. Now I decided to display 500 of them because that's how many Cs we gave. Now here you see 500 bytes, and they are all 434343 so far. And continuing on, they are all 434343, etc. So we can sort of deduce that. 500 bytes is just fine, and we have plenty of room for our shell code, for NOP sled, for whatever we want to throw into memory here. Now, at this point, we know that we have this space to work with, and there's no protection mechanisms on the, the computer that I'm using right now in this virtual machine, so we may just want to pick a memory address somewhere. Now, you might not want to pick the very first one. In some cases, uh, the memory address that you're seeing here won't be the same outside of GDB. So maybe pick something down here. Um, this one seems fine. There is one consideration. Uh, if any of these bytes in here are 0, 0, like BF is the first byte, FF is the next byte, F678, if anywhere there was 0, 0, we wouldn't be able to use that memory address because we wouldn't be able to pass that memory address in through a string that we're providing because 00, zero ends a string. So that's something to keep in mind. So we're going to use this BFFF678. And we will modify our four Fs to represent uh, whatever that value that I just said was. Okay? So if you didn't go watch the security tube videos, now will be a good time to get a good explanation of what little endian means. And because of little endian, we will write this backwards. So the first thing that we will write is dash 
x78 slash x uh, f6 fpf f6 slash x ff slash pf okay so maybe that's really confusing but what we did was we took the last byte or the last two bytes seven eight okay and that was the first part then we took the next two over f6 and that was the next part and then ff and then bf okay that's how the memory address needs to be supplied from our string so that when it gets reassembled into memory it ends up being the right memory address otherwise it would be all backwards and would not work so that's long enough for this video in the next video we will continue and grab some shell code to uh, make this exploit actually do something so i hope you like the series uh... if you want more please subscribe uh... thank you guys bye